Target predicts which of their uh, customers is uh, pregnant, so they can so they can make decisions about how to market uh, pregnancy-related or baby-related products. In general, organizations, government agencies, businesses, nonprofit, even presidential campaigns, are predicting for each individual person uh, what are you going to do next, basically. So they can they can guide their operations. It's a way to make operations and organizations. Uh, more effective, and it affects every one of us every day. We're all being predicted. Well, and, all right, let's go to the Target example. I mean, it's not because they see somebody buying diapers. What kind of information, what kind of data are they looking or mining through of all their customers to figure out who's about to get knocked up? <laughs> so, you know, in general, it's basically whatever data organizations have. In that case, it's, it's a retailer, so it's all their prior purchases, not necessarily medically related or baby related purchases, but it could be a lotion or something like that. Anything that might end up being determined as a clue. So, all the data that organizations have, and there's a lot of excitement about data, the big data, is experience. Data is nothing but a recording of things that have happened. So organizations can learn from experience and they'll find all the little clues that say, hey, well, this person's three times more likely than average to be pregnant. This person's five times more likely than average to vote for our presidential candidate or buy a certain product, click on a link, uh, and, and, you know, have some kind of a health care problem. So all, all right, these well, Let's talk about health care because I don't want to get bogged down in the privacy or, or civil liberties issues. I'm just so curious about how the technology is actually being applied, not just yeah. sort of, you know, or even law enforcement. Where is, is this happening in law enforcement and is, are, is government smart enough to use it in that way? Yeah, very much so. There's uh, an increasing, <laughs> just a couple states now really starting to do it, but an increasing number of states with, with uh, commitments in the work to enact decisions about basically how long does a convict stay in prison. So both uh, parole boards making decisions about release and judges making decisions about sentences uh, consult crime predicting computers. So they see a probability, a score. And that's for all of these applications, including in healthcare. What are the chances this person's going to be uh, uh, And this, is, and this isn't hospital? about what crime, uh, the, what the crime is. It's about what, like what kind of information that, that person has, has given them over time, or you tell me. Well, the thing that's being predicted has to do with crime, so it's going to be recidivism, which is commit the crime again upon release, and that's going to, and that prediction of that is going to inform these decisions. Um, but it's whatever information. So in the case of law enforcement, you know, they have information about the number of prior convictions and the nature of the crime, the the, the length of the initial sentence, this kind of thing. And and uh, uh, usually uh, a lot of these, the, the most money to be made is in finance. Uh, where do we see this happening right now in finance? Well, there's, there's a great deal. I mean, risk uh, is a huge application. So basically, credit risk, are you going to get paid back? Should I give this customer, this applicant, a credit card? Should I give them any kind of line of credit? Um, Chase Bank actually reported a $600 million win based on predicting mortgages. But this is a little uh, twist to the story, because it's not risk in the conventional sense. It's not the risk that they won't get paid back for that loan, um, but it's the risk that this customer is going to leave and go to another bank. Not because they necessarily are going to try to save the customer, that's a marketing application that's common, but what Chase Bank actually did was they looked at all the individual millions of mortgages and they gave each one a prediction, what are the chances that that, that, that we're going to leave? I, I like ABBA too. You know? yeah, there's a lot of ABBA fans <laughs> in here. I wouldn't have predicted that a guy would go by on a bicycle with ABBA with mannequins in the back, but no. So Chase is actually able to figure out if the customer is going to leave them, and therefore, what, maybe sell that mortgage because it's not worth keeping anyway because they're going to lose a person. Exactly. That's, right, that's the point. They're making these decisions. Should we sell this mortgage at the present mortgage, uh, the present market value to a neighboring bank? And now they have this information that the world and the other banks don't have. What are the chances that this mortgage is going to be refinanced? It's really an intriguing glimpse into the future and the future of business. Cool stuff. Eric Siegel, yeah. really appreciate it. Eric Siegel, author of the book Predictive Analytics.